Hey everyone, so today we're going to be working on a beginner Halloween themed scratch project. So for this game, we're going to try to get Peter the Pumpkin to the pumpkin patch safely without being caught by the ghost. For this, we're going to be using our keyboard functions of up, down, left, and right, and we're going to use our arrows. Okay, so I'm going to show you first how to play the game, and then I'll walk you through step by step. So to get started, we're going to do our wind flag clicked, and again, we're trying to stay away from the ghost. Well, let's see what happens if he does accidentally catch me. The game ends, and he says, gotcha. All right, so I'm just going to play again, and this time we're going to try to make it so that Peter can touch the pumpkin patch entrance sign, and he made it. So as you have noticed, either when the pumpkin gets touched by the ghost, the game stops and it ends there and we lost, or he makes it all the way to the pumpkin patch and the game ends. So we wanna make sure that we code all of these functions and that our game is fun and very easy. So to get started, if you have a Scratch account, you are welcome to log into that now. Otherwise, you can just create a new project and you don't need an account to play this game. Okay, so as we get ready, we have our new account ready and open. We're gonna to go to the right hand side of our screen where you see this nice cat in the box and then lower down in the same space, you're gonna see the smaller cat with a little highlight and a little trash can bubble. And that's what we're gonna hit first. We're gonna go ahead and hit that little trash can to delete the cat. We're gonna open up our own sprites here, okay? So to do that, we're gonna go down in that same little sprite box. There's gonna be a photo of a cat around a blue bubble. Don't click it yet, just highlight over it, and then we're gonna slide up two spaces to where it says paint. Go ahead and hit that. And so here you can also import a photo if you are you know, very familiar with Scratch, you can import your own photo of a pumpkin. You can also choose something else from the Scratch box if you'd like, but for this project, I am gonna show you how to paint your own. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna go here to the left-hand side. You should see a nice little color box there that says fill. I'm gonna slide over my color until I find a nice little orange that I like. And then I'll click outside of the box when I found that color. Two ways here to make your pumpkin. One, you can come down to where it has a little paintbrush and you can just draw it freehand and do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. So I really encourage that. But for the video, I'm gonna show you a super easy way to just get started. You can click the circle, come out to our workspace here, as you tap and click, it just creates a nice little circle. So you can do an oval, a circle, however you want your pumpkin to look. Okay, and so that's how I'm gonna have mine. I'm gonna go ahead to the line and create eyes. And again, you can do how, however you'd like. You can be as creative or as simple. Like, okay. I'm gonna create a nice little smile, hopefully. Okay. Not the cutest pumpkin, but he's fun. All right. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna make a nice little stem for him here. And again, take your time here and create something super fun that you like. Make it as creative as you want it to be. Mine's kind of funky today, but that's okay. That's, that's how, how, how Peter's gonna be. All right, and so when you're ready, we're gonna go up to the left-hand side. You're gonna see three tabs. One says code, costumes, and sounds. We're gonna click on the first one that says code, and it'll bring us back to our workspace. Once you are here, you can change the size of your pumpkin. So I made mine already pretty small. Um, I might make them a little bit smaller. So to do that, you can make it bigger or smaller. Go back down to your sprite box. Within that bottom toolbar you see one that says size, you can click on that and change it. Let's just change mine to 80. Perfect. You can change it to whatever you like, depending on how big or small you need it. 
And then next, we're gonna get started with our code. So for this game, every time the flag is clicked, the green flag at the top of the, the, top of the toolbox, we want our code to run and we want our game to begin. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the left-hand side of our screen. We're gonna see our code bubbles here, okay? We're gonna start with our event, it's the yellow one. The very first one, when flag clicked, we're gonna pull that out to our screen. Perfect. Next, we want our pumpkin to start in a specific spot every time the game begins. So every time it starts, we need Peter at one spot. Later, we'll have the ghost at another. That way, we know what kind of path to take because our, our ghost will be kind of moving around randomly. So we want to make sure we have like a good grip on, on our pumpkin. So to set that space for the pumpkin to begin, we're going to go back to our coding bubbles on the left-hand side. We're going to choose the blue motion. We're going to select go to X and Y. It's going to look like that. So two open bubbles, one after X, one after Y. For the X, we're going to change that number to 128. And for the Y, we're going to change that number to 66. And so that's just going to work for me. And as we get coding the rest of the game, you'll see where the pumpkin is and you will have the choice to change it if you'd like. And so from there, we're going to change the layer of the pumpkin. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about the layer a little bit later as we get the sign set up, because that's where, it, where it's needed. So just for now, we're going to pull it out and get it started. So we're going to go to our purple looks in our coding section. We're going to scroll down until you see go to front layer. And if yours does not say front, it will say front or back. You can just click front. Okay, and that is the first part of the coding block for the pumpkin. So the next part, we're gonna do our keyboard functions. Again, we're moving the keyboard arrows up, down, left, and right. Okay, and to do that, we're gonna go back to our events. It's the yellow bubble. It's the second block down. Right now, it says when space key pressed. We're gonna pull four of these out. Good. So for the first one, we're going to select left arrow, and then we're going to do down arrow, and then we'll do right arrow, and then we'll do up arrow. Okay, so we have four when key pressed, we have one left arrow, one down arrow, one right arrow and one up arrow, okay? So for our left arrow, we're gonna go to our motion. It's our blue bubble. And we're gonna grab an X. So we're gonna do find a change X by. Grab a change X by, put that under our left arrow. And we're gonna change that number to negative 10. Next, we're going to do our down arrow. And this is going to be change Y by. So still in that motions block, we're going to find the Y, change Y by. And we're going to change that to negative 10 as well. Okay, so next we're going to do our right arrow. Our right arrow is going to be X as well. So let's do our change X by. And that's going to stay 10. Our up arrow is going to be change Y by, and that is gonna be 10 as well. So to just kind of try it out so you can see how it works, go ahead and just move your arrows around. Go ahead and touch the arrows up, down, left, and right, and your right arrow should move right, your left should move left, and your up and down should move up and down. And if they don't, let's double check your code. When left arrow pressed, should move X by negative 10. When down arrow pressed, should change Y by negative 10. When right arrow pressed, should change X by 10. And when up arrow pressed, it should change your Y by 10. Okay, so once you have that set, that is all of our code for our pumpkin. Super easy. All right, so next we're gonna make our ghost. And to do that, again, you're welcome to create your own. If you want to have a different sprite for that, you can. But for this, we are going to paint our own. 
So we're going to go back to our sprite box, select the cat, move on up to paint. And my ghost is going to be a little gray, so I'm going to go find a nice gray that I like. And I'm just going to paint him in a little half circle -y ghost shape. <laughs> And I'm going to use my paint bucket to fill it. And I'm going to get maybe a darker color. Make a little ghost smile. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so take some time and make your ghost or whatever creature. If there's a different kind of creature that you want to use for this game, please feel free to be creative and have fun. When you are ready, we're going to go back up to the left hand side where it says code, the code tab. Go ahead and click the code tab. And again, I am going to change my size for the ghost because it is a little big. I'm going to, let's do, let's do 50, see where that is. That's kind of cool. I'll leave it at that. So I'm going to leave mine at 50. Again, play around with your size, take some time. And when you're ready, we're going to do our code for the ghost. So to get started, we also want the code to run when the flag is clicked so that they both start to move and go at the same time. So going to the left-hand side of the screen, we're gonna go back to our yellow bubble of events, pull our when flag clicked. Next, we want the ghost to start at the same position every time. It's not gonna be the same position as the pumpkin. You wanna make it kind of the opposite of the screen. So if you did yours the same as mine, they're gonna be top and bottom. Um, otherwise, you can do side to side or opposite corners, wherever you like. So going back to your blue bubble of motions, we're going to do our go to X and Y. So take a moment, it's a little bit down, about halfway down. I'm going to change the X to negative 191. And I'm going to change my Y to 117. And if you want to see where the pumpkin and ghosts are going to end up after you put those in, just hit the flag. And you can hit stop and you'll see where they are. So they could possibly be different. Again, I might move it later. You can move yours later. But for now, you can just kind of do a little check in to see where your ghost begins. All right. Next, we're going to create our forever loop. So all of the controls within the loop that are going to be happening until the game ends or until something happens. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go back to the left hand side of our screen to our orange bubble of control. We're going to grab just a plain forever loop, bring it under our blue block. Next, we want to make the ghost move. So we want it to move. How do we want it to move? I want it to move on its own. Unlike the pumpkin where I use the keyboard functions to make it move, I want the ghost to just kind of float around, be a little ghosty, right? So to do that, we're going to go back to the left hand side of our screen. Go to the blue bubble of motion and we're going to do glide. There's a lot of glide options, so we're going to do the one that's glide one second to random position. And I'm going to slide that in there. I'm going to change my one to a three. And you can change yours, you can keep it slow or fast. It just depends on how fast or slow you want the speed to be. So for me, Three works pretty well because they're both kind of a, a good size. If yours is maybe smaller, you could maybe move yours a little bit faster or you could maybe move it a little bit slower if you want to take the time to really move your pumpkin around the screen during the game. So take a minute if you'd like and just kind of play around with, with the seconds and play around with the glide speed there. And when you're ready, we're going to make a, another loop. So this next portion of the loop is again, still conditions that we want the code to run while the game is working. And we want something to happen, like as you saw when I demoed at the beginning, when the pumpkin touched the ghost, the game ended. So now we're gonna set that part of code up. If we do get caught by the ghost, we want something to happen. We want to say a message, we want the game to end. Peter the pumpkin didn't make it to the patch, so we want to make sure that we're aware of that. So to do that, we're gonna do another loop, so going back to your control, it's the orange bubble in the left-hand side. We're going to grab an if-then statement. We're going to put that right underneath our glide, still within our forever loop. So our if-then statement statements is if something happens, then something else will happen. And so for that, we want if the ghost is touching the pumpkin, we want the game to end, and we want the ghost to announce that he caught the pumpkin. 
So we're gonna go back to our coding bubbles. On the left-hand side, it's gonna be the light blue bubble that says sensing. So click sensing, and it's gonna be the very first one that says touching mouse pointer. Yours might say something else, but mine says mouse pointer. And that little bubble next to the if statement, so right in between, it's gonna highlight when that gets closed. So you're gonna drop that in. From the drop down menu of mouse pointer, I'm gonna do my sprite one. If you've named your sprite, then it's gonna be whatever your pumpkin is named. I didn't name mine right now, so it's just gonna be sprite one. So when the ghost touches the pumpkin, now we need it to do something. So I want it to broadcast a message and in the game. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our control, our events, sorry, we're gonna to go to our events. It's gonna be the yellow bubble and we're gonna do broadcast message and that's gonna go right underneath inside of our if then loop. And we're gonna do a new message. So from the drop down menu, we're gonna do new message and mine's just gonna say gotcha. Okay, so as we broadcast, we want it to kind of go out there for it to actually be able to be seen. So we're gonna go up to our looks. It's our purple bubble. And it's gonna do say hello for two seconds. And I'm gonna change that to my message, my broadcast message of gotcha for two seconds. So once the ghost catches the pumpkin, it says gotcha, and the game is going to end. To make the game end, we need to stop the code from running. To stop the code from running, we're gonna go over to our control. It's our orange bubble. We're gonna scroll down till we find our stop all block. Drag that block underneath our purple block to stop the game. And that's, that's it for the ghost pumpkin, very easy. So just to review, we have our wind flag clicked, we're gonna set the pumpkin, no, set the ghost in a space away from the pumpkin. We're gonna create a loop for the ghost to just glide around until it touches the pumpkin. And at that point, the game will stop. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create our banner, our pumpkin patch banner. So we're gonna go back to paint one more time. We're just gonna create a sign. So you can do your sign and whatever color you want. I think I'm gonna do mine, I think I had a green, because it was very fall, so maybe a color of green. And you can hand draw the sign, or you can do it how I did it using the shapes. Now I'm gonna go to my T, so the T is for text. And you can create a text bubble here. to type in your pumpkin patch sign. And I'm gonna say pumpkin patch. And then you can move it around. I'm gonna move my And then I'm gonna put it inside. There, so super simple. You can, I encourage you to maybe draw some other things around your sign, make it really cool and fun. I'm just gonna keep it pretty basic for now. That's my pumpkin batch sign. And when you're ready, go ahead and click that code tab up in the left-hand corner once again. And before we move that sign, so the pumpkin batch sign does not have any code at all. We're just gonna place it in one position and it's gonna stay there. Before we place it though, we're gonna add a new backdrop. That way we know where to add it. And so this is a really fun part. So if you have like a photo of a pumpkin patch or a field or anything that you wanna use, you can import that now. Otherwise, we're just gonna pick a photo from the stock images. And to do that, we're gonna go back to our sprite box. Next to where we chose our sprites, there's a little photo, just kind of looks like a picture. And it says, choose a backdrop. Go ahead and click there. And for this one, I chose a farm. There's also a lot of other options here. So take some time if you need to. You can pause the video at any time 
and just kind of pick something that is fun for you. You can also paint your backdrop if you want to do that too. And that's really fun to do. So I chose the farm. I'm going to change the size on my pumpkin patch sign. I'm going to move my ghost out of the way for now. And then I'm going to put my sign right here. Okay. Yeah, so my sign can live right there. That's where it's going to hang out, just so you know, hey, there's the pumpkin patch. And he or the pumpkin's coming from out of town, so he needs to know where to go. And again, there's no coding on this sign. Once you make your sign, it's just going to hang out there above wherever your pumpkin patch is. And next, when you're ready, we're going to go back to our sprites. This time, we're actually going to click on the little cat face to choose a sprite. We're going to go to the search bar on the left-hand side, and we're going to type in line. So a nice red line should pop up. Go ahead and click that. And we're going to change the size of our line. And let's do somewhere around 30 or 36 would be good. And then you're going to drag it to either the top or the bottom. So you can do the top if you want. If you want Peter to have a, a little more work to do, you can drag it to the top or you can drag it to the bottom of your pumpkin patch sign. There we go. And so the line is going to be the stopping point. It's kind of like the finish line when you're running a race. You, Peter needs to get there and touch that line in order for the game to stop and the ghost to stop chasing him. So we are going to have a little bit of code for the line. And when you're ready, we're going to go back to our control section. So our little orange bubble on the left hand side. Our events, I'm sorry, we're going to go to our events and we're going to do our wind flag clicked. Next, we want the line to make sure it goes to a space. We're going to keep it right underneath the sign. So it's possible it can move depending on how your game is. So we want to make sure that it is locked because we do have code on it. So we're going to go to our blue motions and we're going to drag our go to X and Y. So we've used this block a few times already. So we're going to drag that out one more time. For our X, I'm going to change mine to negative 159. And that's just because that's where my line is. So if you don't know where your line is, you can click it. Actually, I'm gonna change it because it's different now. Mine is, my X is one, negative 108. So I'm gonna change that to negative 108. And my Y, as you can see here, is negative eight. So it's still on negative eight. And again, if you need to find out where your X and Y are, you go down to the Sprite box. That first line, it says Sprite. The name is line, next to it, it shows your X coordinate, and then it shows your Y coordinate. So if you move your sprite to any position on the screen, it will always show you the coordinates, and you can always pop those in manually if you don't know. Okay, so once we have that, we're gonna create a forever loop. It's going back to our control, grab a forever, pop it underneath, and within that, we're gonna create an if then. So we're still in our control, pull out an if then, put it inside of the forever loop. And so we want to make sure that when the line touches the pumpkin, the game ends. So to do that, we're going to go back to our sensing. We've done this once before, so I know you guys, you guys got it. Nice light blue bubble, very first one, touching mouse pointer. And that's going to go right within our if then. We're going to change that mouse pointer from our drop down menu to sprite one. And again, Sprite 1 is your pumpkin. So if you named your pumpkin, whatever your pumpkin is named, it's going to be that. And then next, our very last step before we play this game is once the line and the pumpkin touch, our game is over and you guys did a great job. So to stop the game, we're going to do our stop all block. So going back to our code circles, you're going to touch your control. You're going to slide it up, stop all, and place that right underneath. And that will end the game. Okay, and so let's play our game. Let's see how it is. Go, 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 go. Perfect. So I did keep going a little bit after the game ended, but as you saw, the ghost did stop once I ended the game. 
And so for a nice little coding challenge for you, you can add some extra obstacles in there. You can even duplicate the ghost if you'd like. Another fun one is to maybe create a message or a broadcast for after the game ends. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy the game. Thank you.